Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs and welcome to this uh, video about render farms. Wouldn't it be cool if you had this render farm that is at your disposal and was absolutely free instead of having to send something somewhere and pay a lot of money to get it rendered or try to render it yourself and it takes days and days or weeks to render something. Well, we do have a free render farm and in fact, it is completely free. Um, it is called Sheepit. Now I found out about Sheepit quite a while back. I got something in my email on it and I seen this free render farm and I thought, well, that's interesting. And it has to do with Blender. It's, it's specifically for Blender, you know, render farm for Blender. And um, so I kept it in the back of my mind. I really didn't have time to check into it at the time, but then I did and I'm glad I did. So what is Sheepit Render Farm? Well, like I said, it is a free render farm for Blender. And this is the website right here as I see it now. Now they are working on a brand new website. So that'll be coming up pretty soon. But when I first got into Sheepit, I must say that it wasn't quite um, intuitive to me how to get started with all this. So I had to kind of figure it out. So I'm going to kind of show you what I found out about Sheepit and maybe it'll help you out here. So uh, right here on the first page, we're at the home page and uh, you can kind of look through this and see what you have here. But then what you want to do is go to the get started tab. And from here, uh, it has a few frequently asked questions. It has even more over here on this far right tab. But from here, there's a couple ways that you can use Sheepit. Um, there is a web client that you can use with Java. There's also a Windows 64 bit client that you can download and use. Now I haven't used the web client at all, so I can't tell you too much about that, but I have used the uh, downloadable client. So all you need to do is come over here. It's a 29 megabyte file and you download this client and how cheap it works is it's kind of based on a credit system. So the idea is if you download the client and you use your computer, what, what Sheepit does is it uses a lot, a network of computers that are on uh, to render the frames that people need. So if you use your computer and contribute to the Sheepit farm, the render farm, then you get a number of credits. So when you go to have something rendered by the Sheepit render farm, then it looks at the amount of credits you have and it says, okay, you have this many credits, we'll put you on you know this, this part of the list. Now you can also use Sheepit with absolutely no credits or even negative credits. And uh, you can still uh, put your project in there. The only thing is you may be waiting forever because you don't have any credits to, to um, get your things rendered with. So if we go over here to projects, we can kind of look at this. Now, I'll go over the client in a minute, but we're gonna look at the projects. And right now, these are all the projects that are currently uh, being rendered or waiting to be rendered by the Sheep at Render Farm. And if you look through there, it's quite a few of them. You can see that a lot of them are in progress. Um, you, if you look at some of these, like right now, this one here, um, it's got 550 frames being rendered and it's been rendered by 42 uh, different PCs that are rendering frames at the moment. And if you look at this guy's account, you can click on his name and you can say, he has negative 7,000 credits. So I'm not quite sure why he's even being rendered at this particular moment, but you can look at some of these, some of the ones up top um, are waiting. And these here have been waiting forever. I think perhaps these are kind of uh, maybe stuck in the system. I don't know, but I've seen them here for a while, but they don't have very many credits. So that's why I thought maybe they, were, they weren't being rendered. And then if you look over to the side here, this little, um, these little icons, one means CPU and one means GPU, GPU for your graphics card. And basically what this is, is what the person has set their, their um, projects to be rendered with. Now, personally, I would pick both. That way, no matter what kind of renderer is rendering your project, uh, they'll be able to render it anyway. But CPU is by default and you have to actually tell it to use the GPU, but I'll show you where to do that. Now, if we come down here, this green one here are some of the things that I got rendered. Um, 
It took me a while to try out the render farm because I didn't really have anything to get rendered, but then I thought, well, I need to get something set up. I don't wanna make a tutorial or a video about something without not knowing a little bit about it. So I went ahead and did my, uh, set up my animation and sent it to the render farm. And I had quite a bit of credits because I had been uh, render, I had been uh, using my computers in the meantime to, to gather up credits. So it just went right away. I mean, it's people started rendering my frames out. Um, I think it took for this 575 frames, it took a little under two hours, something that would probably take me, I don't know, I'm thinking three days, my computer running 24 hours a day to do. So this is highly beneficial if you, you know, do any kind of rendering at any time. So I highly recommend that, you know, go ahead and download the client. Even if you don't have anything that you need rendering yourself at this point in time, you can start rendering for other people and, and contribute to the render farm and start building up your credits. So if we go over here to the status tab, um, you can kind of see what's going on in the entire render farm. Uh, we have over 30, 37,000 frames that need to be rendered, 51 active projects, 190 connected clients, and 187 on processing frames. Um, so, and you can look at this other, other details here. So about 190 computers. Uh, it doesn't hurt to just pile on more and more computers into the rendering farm because the more computers that are working on the render farm, the faster it works and the better it is for everybody. So how does this thing work? Well, like I said, it wasn't quite, you know, I didn't see any step-by-step -step instruction here. So I had to kind of figure it out. But basically what you want to do, number one, you want to create an account. The account is free. So you can kind of look at my account here. Uh, you can see that the ones that I'm currently rendering, it even shows you previews of the frames that are rendering, which is pretty cool. And um, it gives you kind of a summary of, um, of how much you've rendered. Uh, like now, right now I have over a million credits because I've been rendering like crazy. Um, I have right at this moment, I have three connected machines just because I had some spare PCs that at this point in time, I can connect to it. I may have to take them down and, you know, eventually, but there's something I could contribute to it for right now, um, which has enabled me to get these credits. So if you go down to the bottom, you can see the top renders over a month and I'm going to click on that. So if you look at this, uh, there is 870 people on this list. You can look at the very bottom one and you can see that they have zero credits. Now, towards the bottom, all these people, well, actually it shows over here. You know, all these people have zero credits. So if you start rendering uh, like today or tonight, you set your computer to render, you would al already beat out like 100 people for credits, you know, for, the, the, for your status on this list. And when I started rendering, I can tell you that I started moving up really quickly. Um, wasn't tough at all because, you know, all the way up to the 600, you know, you're only talking about 700 something credits and, and you build them up really quickly. Uh, when it started getting tough, I think, is when I got to, uh, I got through the thousands pretty quick. But when you get into something like, you know, 10,000 or whatever, then it starts slowing down a little bit. But still, I mean, look at all those people that you're already ahead of. So then it be, you know, I got kind of obsessed with it. It's like, I got to I gotta move up the list. I got to move up the list. So I added a few computers and I started moving up. And as you can see, if we go all the way up here, I'm already in the top 5% renderers. I'm at number nine. And that's just pretty cool. I have just tons of credits to use. But the cool thing about it is I'm able to contribute to the render farm. And then whenever I need something rendered, I can just throw it in there and it does it very quickly. So, like I said, what you want to do is click on the Get Started, download this client, and then install it after you created your account. And once you install your client, what I did is I took the client and I copied it to my desktop. It's called Sheepit. You double click on it and you run it and it will extract. And it comes up with this little interface right here. So what you have is you would put in your login and password for Sheepit. And if you use a proxy, then you'll have it there. Most people don't. 
And I recommend that you, uh, this will come up with a, a default directory. I recommend that you create a directory uh, specifically for Sheepit, um, just so you'll know where it's put in the files. And if you need to go in there and clear it out or whatever you need to do, um, you'll know where it's at. I haven't had to do anything with it, but I just, it makes me feel good to know. I know exactly where it's put in the files. And then you can tell it, well, do you want um, Sheepit to use your CPU, your GPU, or both? And I've selected both here. Then you can tell Sheepit the number of CPU cores to use. So if you want to, you can scale this down. I, I left it at the, uh, the maximum. Now, very important, uh, what I found out my experience with this client is that when you start it, it will take all your computer resources. So I think they needed to do a little work and back that off a little bit, but I'll show you a workaround that works really well for me. And that is what I did is I come down here and I'd start the task, task manager. Now, um, if you are using Windows 7, you come down to Sheep It and you right click and you will go to your priority. But if you're using Windows 10 like I am, then you just go come down here, right click on it and go to details. And then again, it looks like Windows 7. So then you would right click on Sheep It again and then you'll go to set priority. By default, it's on normal. I always come in here and I set it below normal. And it'll warn you, do you really want to do this? Yes, I want to change priority. Close that. Now the priority that Sheepit is going to use on your CPU is changed. And now you can start it. Okay, the reason that I do that is because, like I said, it will take all your resources on your computer. And when I say all of them, I mean all of them. You will not be able to even do a control alt delete, which is not good because, um, you know, sometimes you have to get into your computer, you have to do something or at least shut it down gracefully if you need to. And you cannot do that. At least that has been my experience with you, but you cannot do that. So, um, by running this process on your CPU below the normal priority, it allows you to do things on your computer if you need to. You know, it'll, it'll still be a little bit sluggish, which is, you know, makes sense because it's using the renderer, but it will allow you to get in and do things. So highly, highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, I would not run Sheepit without not doing that. So um, what it does when you start running it is it requests a sample job and it'll test your, you know, your computer and say, you know, it gives it like a rating, you know, on the, it calls it the power of your computer. and um, that way it knows what kind of uh, priority to put your computer in as far as a renderer. And then once it does that, which only takes, you know, a minute or, to, or two, then it starts downloading the project and it'll start rendering frames. So right now mine is rendering a frame. Uh, it tells me that there's six seconds, five, four, two seconds left, and it finishes the frame. Once it finishes the frame, then it will give you a preview. So I think that frame was actually bigger than what it thought it was. It's taken a little bit longer. So the cool thing is it will give you a little render frame. It'll tell you how many credits you've earned once you render a frame. And it just depends on what you're rendering. I mean, as far as the credits, but uh, like you might render a frame and it might you might get 22 credits for that frame. But let me tell you, it builds up really, really quickly. You'll be amazed at how, how fast it builds up. And then uh, it says remaining frames, last render frame, that sort of thing. You can also go to your settings, which is basically back to this here. You can pause it if you need to. You can block this project if you want to. Um, according to the rules of the render farm, you know, nobody's supposed to be rendering anything offensive or, you know, racist or whatever. But um, if you see something that you don't agree with or just, for whatever reason, you can block the project. And you can also say, well, I'm done for rendering using the render farm for now. I'm going to exit after this frame, which is a good, you know, practice. You don't really want to just kill the render, your render in the middle of a frame or it won't be done for the, for the person. So I don't know exactly what this is showing me, but somebody's rendering something here. So I'm just going to exit after this frame. So that is the client. What I recommend if you want to run a client and you want to contribute to the render farm, 
run the client when you're not using your computer, of course. You want to do it um, anytime you just feel like running it with, when you're not using your computer. And especially what I usually do is I run it overnight if I want to leave my computer on and run the client and contrib contribute to the render farm. So the other part of it is what if you want to uh, get your own project render? Well, the way that you do this, um, just keep think of the client as separate. That's the renderer. doesn't have anything to do with you rendering your own projects. So what you do is you go to projects. And once that comes up, you like again, you'll see all these projects that are, are working. You can choose add a project. And it will tell you some information here uh, that is important for you to read. And then you come down here and choose the file. So I'm going to choose a blend file here and you choose send this file and then it'll give you some options to use here. And most of them are self-explanatory. Uh, you know, the time scope, time, the frames you want rendered, uh, split each frame into four tiles. This is if, and, and you hover over it and it kind of tells you why, but basically it's if one frame is really too big for the parameters that they, uh, they have on the render farm. You have some advanced settings. You can click that. You can change the frame file name, the amount of memory used, and you can you know click over this and read all this. And then you can add this job. So I'm not gonna add this job because there's really nothing in here for me to render. But uh, once you add the job, then you can come over here back to your profile and you will see that your project is being rendered. And you can actually get into your project like if these are already done, but if I click in here, then it will actually start showing the different ones that frames that are finished or waiting, you know, all these different statuses here. And important part is I always come down here and the compute device is by default CPU is selected, but I also select GPU. I don't know why this is not by default, but probably because a lot of people maybe still use Blender internal render and you can't do that with the GPU, so that's why it's not selected by default. But I always come in here and I make sure I turn that on because I use cycles and you know I want people to be able to render it as quickly as possible. So you can kind of look at what you have here. You can actually come in and as it's rendering, you can see the frames, which is very, very cool. Um, you can see the status of it. So when I rendered this, I came in and I seen some that were coming up uh, not correct. They weren't being rendered correctly by a certain client that was evidently having problems. So I was able to just come in here and just reset the ones that were not um, being rendered correctly. And I actually went to my profile, come back to the proof profile here, and you can see I've blocked this user right here because for whatever reason, um, every time he rendered one of my frames, it just came up this cube so it, it wasn't working correctly. So that's a nice little feature that they have there. And as your project is being rendered, you can come up back over to the project screen and you can just kind of keep tabs on it. Uh, what I did is I went down here and I seen that, you know, all of a sudden six people were rendering frames, then 20, then 47, and then 64. And I'm like, wow, this is great. This is amazing. But I'm going to say that you do have to have some credits in order to, you know, have computers jump on your project like that. So I'm going to recommend to you, if you have any interest in using the render farm, go ahead and download the client and start um, contributing to the render farm in your spare time, like overnight or whenever you can do it. Or uh, if you'd like to contribute a different way, they have this donate button here. So I think it's really cool. Um, as much as, you know, I haven't used it very much yet, but my experience with it has been uh, really great so far. And I seen their beta website that's coming out and it looks great. So I'm eager to see that become active. So other than that, if you have any questions about Sheepit or this video, um, Sheepit, if you come down to the bottom here, you can see, you can click on this forum. They have a couple of forums where you can kind of look in there. Also, definitely go to this frequently asked questions page. It has a lot of uh, answers to the questions that, you know, ones that I had, especially it's like, oh, okay, they, they answered it here. That's great. So um, 
if you have any other questions that maybe I can answer from using it, um, put in the comments and I'll try to answer. Otherwise, check it out. Happy rendering, and I'll catch you in the next video.